Breaking news, the FDA has declared the Zet Balmanjaro shortage over. That's right, let me say it again. Breaking news, the FDA has officially ended the shortage of terzepatide, Zet Bound, and Manjaro. They have officially been removed from the FDA's master shortage list. When I started using GLP-1s to treat obesity in September of 2023, I faced the same problem, trying to access brand name drugs like Manjaro and Zet Bound. I have taken all three, compounded terzepatide, Monjaro, and Zepbound, and for much of that time, Eli Lilly has been unable to supply those drugs because of shortages. I believe those shortages will continue despite Eli Lilly's best efforts. The shortages made it nearly impossible, and that's what led Lorraine and I to compounded terzepatide. We've both seen incredible success using these medications. I've lost 78 pounds, and she's lost more than 50 but now with the FDA declaring that shortage officially over, this has the potential to limit access to compounded tazepatide severely. 503B pharmacies will be forced to stop mass manufacturing tazepatide in just 60 days. And that's where the bad news comes in. This news has the potential to end or dramatically decrease the compounding of tazepatide, which could directly affect the tens of thousands of Americans relying on compounded medications. Well, these compounded versions have provided an alternative for those who cannot afford the sky-high prices Eli Lilly charges for Monjaro and Zepbound, all while making billions of dollars in profit. According to the FDA, a drug may be compounded for patients who cannot be treated with an FDA-approved medication. For instance, some patients may have allergies to specific dyes or children and elderly patients may require a liquid form instead of tablets or capsules. Compounding pharmacies provide these customized solutions to meet patient-specific needs. Now, let's clear up any confusion. Let's talk about the difference between 503A and 503B compounding pharmacies. 503A compounding pharmacies are traditional pharmacies that provide medications based on individual patient-specific prescriptions. These pharmacies prepare customized medications for patients who need alternatives to commercially available drugs. 503B outsourcing facilities, on the other hand, can mass-produce medications for healthcare facilities, hospitals, and clinics, while meeting strict FDA manufacturing standards. With the FDA shortage over, 503B facilities will no longer be able to mass produce terzepatide after 60 days. So they'll be able to fill prescriptions that they currently have or orders that they have because they're doing it in mass. But beyond that 60 days, they should not be able to do it. However, 503A pharmacies may still provide compounded versions, but only on a patient-specific basis. Now, the 503A pharmacy has been around for centuries. These are your old school pharmacists, and they're very good at it. They are doing it in some volume, but it's not thousands and thousands of doses. It's a smaller quantity. This decision from the FDA will severely impact access to compounded terzepatide from both 503A and 503B pharmacies. The tens of thousands of Americans who rely on them could be forced back to Eli Lilly's brand name drugs or worse, go without treatment because they simply cannot afford it. If you're currently getting your compounded terzepatide through a telehealth provider, reach out to them immediately to find out their plan. Most telehealth providers rely on 503A pharmacies, which compound medications based on individual prescriptions. With the shortage over, you must understand how this could affect your treatment, your access to these medications. Ensure your provider has a clear plan to navigate this new challenge. There is little doubt in my mind that the largest of the telehealth providers and the doctors and providers who are working with them will solve for this. The question is what will happen next? If you've been using compounded trisepatite and are concerned about how this shortage resolution might impact your treatment, here are a few things you should consider. Number one, talk to your health care provider. So whether it's your regular doctor, a telehealth provider, med spa, you name it, talk to them. It's essential to consult your provider about what the FDA's announcement means for your treatment. 
that can help you understand your options and whether transitioning to the brand name drug is the best route for you or whether they have a plan that can continue to provide for you. Your doctor or pharmacist might be able to recommend alternative solutions, including possibly new medications in the pipeline or using a semaglutide, liraglutide, or one of the other drugs out there. Number two, explore financial assistance programs. If the cost of brand name Manjaro is upbound is a concern, check with your doctor, pharmacy, or Eli Lilly about any financial assistance programs that may be available. Eli Lilly offers a savings card that might help reduce the cost for those who qualify. But unfortunately, it is still very costly. They are still making billions off of their patients and charging exorbitant rates. Number three, consider insurance options. This is the time of year for it. If you're paying out of pocket or have high copays, now might be the time to review your insurance options, look into whether other plans might cover these medications at a lower cost. So many of us, like Lorraine and I, are buying this off of the marketplace. There may be options out there for you. Unfortunately, there has not been for us to date, but things are changing. Number four, stay informed. The situation about compounded terzepatite is evolving. Stay updated on FDA policies and any potential legal changes that might impact your access to affordable treatments. Of course, we'll do our best to inform you. This is not the end of the fight for compounded terzepatite. This is just the beginning. Doctors will write prescriptions for compounded terzepatite. There's no doubt in my mind. They will figure out something to add to it or a way to change it. They will meet FDA regulations, and Eli Lilly will get pissed off about it. And there will be lawsuits, no doubt in my mind whatsoever. And it will get even nastier than it has been. Eli Lilly is dead set on increasing and protecting their profits with little concern for you and I. Our legal system is slow and cumbersome, and that will play to our advantage. There is a window of opportunity to stock up and prepare for what's coming. And I cannot stress this enough, elections are coming up and this is your chance to make a difference. This is your chance to vote for better access to health care and affordable medications for everyone. This is the time to reach out to your congressman, your senator, your governor, your mayor, and lobby for our health care, lobby for access to these medications. Things must change. You know that. I know that. Eli Lilly knows that. But they're not going to do it of their own accord. They're going to continue to rake in billions of dollars in profits. I believe these medications will continue to be available in compounded forms. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. If I am, I'll be happy to say it when it happens. I don't believe Eli Lilly will be able to keep these out of shortage. People need and want these medications. Just as soon as the spigot opens up, they will take more than Eli Lilly can possibly make and they will be back on the shortage list. It's only a matter of time. So the question for Eli Lilly is really, what are you doing and how much is it going to cost you legally to do this? And would it just be cheaper to lower the price of the medications and make more? We'd be happy to take your medications, keep them in stock, give us a great price, and we can be loyal customers, I assure you. Lorraine and I will continue to follow the development closely, and we urge you to do the same. As always, please consult with your health care provider about how this news might impact your treatment options, and we'll keep you informed as the landscape changes. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Downsized and stay tuned for more insights as we continue this GLP-1 adventure. I know it's scary. We're scared too. But we're in this together. Please join us tomorrow night. We'll talk about all of this stuff at 7 live here on The Downsized. And don't forget to share this with a friend. Share this with the people that it could impact. Spread the news of what's going on. Spread the news of what Eli Lilly is doing and reach out to your elected officials. We can make change. More than 40% of the American public is overweight or obese. It's a voting block that is larger than anyone else. We can make a change. I'm Christopher Durham, and we are The Downsized.